The Guardians of the Galaxy member Groot is a human-like tree with incredible strength and remarkable intelligence, but most people can't recognize how smart he is because his speech is very subtle. To humans, everything he says sounds like, I am Groot. But if you could discern his subtle tones, you'd recognize that he actually has a lot to say. But that's just a character in comics and movies. In the real world, there's a very distinct line between animal and vegetal life. Plants don't communicate, and they certainly don't think and feel. That's a known fact. Or is it? I am Rusty. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm Rusty, and I like plants. I don't love them. It's nothing personal. I just don't have anything in common with them. They just sort of sit there. A lot of times I want to say, hey, plant, why don't you go get a job and stop mooching off the sunlight? Then I remember they can't hear. Or at least, I thought they couldn't. Until I learned about the Dismodian Jirens, or the dancing plant. When soft, high-pitched music is played, this plant dances along. Another example of plant hearing was shown in a study done by the University of Missouri. When a recording of a caterpillar munching leaves was played back to a thalecrest plant, the plant significantly upped its production of defense chemicals. And it's not just their ability to hear that surprised me. It turns out, like Groot, they're able to communicate as well. When a sagebrush plant's leaves are clipped, they produce volatile chemicals because they believe they're under attack by insects. Later, when insects actually do attack them, they're ready and suffer less damage. But it's not just that individual plant that suffers less damage. The unclipped sagebrush plants near the clip plant have also produced more chemicals and have suffered less damage. The nearby plants have been warned by the chemical discharge of the clip plant that there's a threat. Corn and lima beans are capable of communicating across species. When caterpillars start to eat them, they release a chemical distress signal that's picked up by parasitic wasps. The wasps then hone in on the plants and eat the caterpillars, acting as plant bodyguards. Plants can also recognize if another plant is a member of the same species or different from itself. When a young sapling of a different species gets too close to the roots of an oak tree, the oak launches a chemical attack against it. Sea rockets will compete for root space against other species, but when put in a pot with two other sea rockets, their roots make room for the other plants. A University of Western Australia study on mimosa plants, which closed their leaves when startled by a stimulus, showed that the plants stopped closing their leaves after the stimulus proved unharmful. This suggests that they're capable of learning and holding memories. Plants even support their young. Older fir trees use root systems to distribute nutrients to younger fir trees that are growing under shade. They support them until they're tall enough to reach sunlight. Despite these similarities between animals and plants, many scientists reject the growing field of plant neurobiology. Part of the problem is that plants don't have neurons. But is neurobiology meant to be taken that literally? Is it the study of neurons or is it the study of thinking, of intelligence? Plants may not have neurons, but the transitional area of their roots has some of the same neuroactive chemicals that can be found in our brain. And this same area produces electrical action potentials just like our neurons do. In Charles Darwin's 1880 book, The Power of Movement in Plants, he suggests that a plant is an organism standing on its head, that the roots of a plant act like the brain of a lower animal. The root tips get sensory data from other parts of the plant and use that information to direct growth and movement present-day plant neurobiologists agree with this assessment. So how human are plants, and do we need to reevaluate our relationship with them? Before answering that, there's one other thing we should take into account. When plants are injured, they produce the chemical ethylene. Ethylene works as an anesthetic on animals. Why would a plant need to produce an anesthetic if it doesn't feel pain? Whatever the answer, there's one thing I feel completely secure in, and that's that plants are our friends, and we have nothing to fear from them. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more episodes. Check out the playlist I put together of some of the craziest plants out there, and let me know what superpower you want.